attitudes then in continuation this tcp header discussion the next fields is sequence numbers and the acknowledgement numbers so these two are 32 bit long uh, 32 bit long uh, numbers now <coughs> here if you see the first this one as we mentioned that in the tcp inside the packet suppose let us take one packet suppose its length is 100 bytes okay its length is 100 bytes so this is we have 100 bytes inside this so for each byte we have one sequence number this we already seen in character 6 so this is suppose if it is starting with sequence number 0 and ending sequence number is 99 now you have continuation of this one actually you assume your data is uh, your total data is 250 bytes so maximum packet size is assumed 100 bytes so this is also next 100 bytes in the first first 100 bytes is this packet and the next 100 bytes and the remaining 50 bytes is last packet so here what we have to understand is if it is starting with 0 then it is started with 0 so total 100 bytes are there it is the last sequence number for the last byte is 99 then for that continuation of next packet you have to give next number 99 then next is 100 so and here also we have 100 bytes so 199 is the last sequence number for the last byte in the second packet this is first one second one third one now for the third packet which have the 50 bytes here it is started with 200 and ending sequence number is 240 so in this manner we are going to give sequence numbers for each byte when you divide the packet into the multiple packs when you divide your total data into the multiple packs but here the thing is this is these are the sequence numbers for the uh, each byte inside the packet but at the end you have to give the sequence number for the each packet also because no one will see in between no one will see inside the sequence numbers of each byte but routers will see uh, between person between persons will see only the header sequence number we need ultimately the header sequence number so what we are going to do here we have to give the sequence number accordingly basing on these sequence numbers for each byte there should be synchronization so for that we have a set of bytes are there in each packet so whatever be the starting sequence number for the first byte simply for the first byte whatever be the sequence number that we are going to give sequence number for the packet so here starting first byte sequence number is 0 so 0 we are setting as a first sequence number uh, sequence number for the packet now when you come to this packet first byte sequence number is 100 so we are going to give 100 is the packet sequence number and then here we are going to give 200 is the packet sequence number for the third byte so this manner simply saying that first data byte sequence number first data byte sequence number must be specified as a sequence number for the packet hope you got this one now if you see the second one tcp uses random initial sequence number tcp uses random initial sequence number what does it mean see here when you comes to here when you comes to the first packet first after this is your total amount of data this we divided basing on the available packet size now here the thing is for the first packet for the first two byte are we need to always start with zero or we can take any sequence number uh, which are available 
so simply it is saying that tcp is saying that we can take initial sequence number anyone randomly we can select but after that you should continue by modulus operation so here we are starting with 0 we are continuing suppose if you started with 50 we will continue this sequence number so initial sequence number for the first packet of the first byte first byte of the first packet we can select any random number of which are available sequence numbers after that you should continue in the same manner so this it is saying 